let's practice solving some absolute value equations. So the first example, absolute value of x minus 25 equals 17. Now remember that means this expression is located 17 units from zero. So that means that x minus 25 can be located at positive 17, or x minus 25 can be located at negative 17. So I set up two equations, x minus 25 equals 17, and x minus 25 equals negative 17. And then I just solve them separately. I would isolate the x by adding 25 to both sides. So x equals 42. And in this equation, x minus 25 equals negative 17. I would add 25 to both sides and get x equals 8. Now, the important concept is you have to check your solution. Because there are going to be times where you get a value that may not be true. And so we have to make sure each of these work. So if I take the absolute value of 42 minus 25, it should equal 17. So 42 minus 25 is 17. So does the absolute value of 17 equal 17? Yes, it does. So therefore, this is an answer. We can do the same thing for x equals 8. Absolute value of 8 minus 25 should equal 17. 8 minus 25 is negative 17. So does the absolute value of negative 17 equal 17? It does. So therefore, x equals 8 is also an answer. So let's see why it's important to check our solution with this following example. Absolute value of 2x plus 7 equals, sorry, plus 5 equals 0. We're going to want to first isolate the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to remove this positive 5 and move it over to the other side by subtracting. So really my equation is the absolute value of 2x plus 7 equals negative 5. So what this means is that 2x plus 7 is located negative 5 units from 0 on the number line. Now pay attention to those words because we're going to see what that means algebraically. 2x plus 7 is located negative 5 units from 0 on the number line, a distance of negative 5. That's interesting. So let's see what that means algebraically. So we'll follow the same idea. We'll keep the original and drop the bars. And then we'll make the number it's equal to the opposite, the negative of it. So negative and negative is positive. So let me solve for x. I would subtract 7 and get 2x equals negative 12. And divide by 2, x equals negative 6. Subtract 7, 2x equals negative 2. Divide by 2, x equals negative 1. Now, let's check our answers. If we were to plug negative 6 in to our equation, and I'll go back to the original. If we do twice negative 6 plus 7 inside the absolute value, and then add 5 to that, you know, our work says we should get 0. So let's see, we have 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, plus 7 is negative 5. So I have the absolute value of negative 5 plus 5 should equal 0. Well, the absolute value of negative 5 is a positive 5. So really, I have 5 plus 5 equals 0. Does 10 equal 0? That's not a true statement. So that means this is not a real solution to this, well, not a solution at all to this. Let's see about x equals negative 1. So we have the absolute value of twice, twice of negative 1 plus 7 plus 5 outside the absolute value should equal 0. So the absolute value of negative 2 plus 7 plus 5 should equal 0. So we get the absolute value of 5 plus 5 equals 0. Well, the absolute value of 5 is 5. So does 5 plus 5 equal 0? Does 10 equal 0? That's another false statement. So that means x equals negative 1 is not a solution. So neither one of our answers work. And so when this happens, we say there are no solutions. Now, why are there no solutions for this problem? 
And that's why I said it was important to look at the translation of the absolute value equation. We're told to translate it as 2x plus 7 is located negative 5 units from 0, a distance of negative 5. And if we recall our definitions, we've learned that distance is always positive. Distance is always positive. So when we isolate our absolute value and see it's equal to a negative number, there's no way we can have any answer because our distance is negative. And distance can never be negative for it. So that's a very unique problem and why it's important to understand the definition of absolute values. So let's look at the third example. Absolute value of x minus 2 minus 13 equals 5. You would isolate the absolute value bars by themselves by adding 13 to both sides. So the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 18. And now let's set up our two equations, one where x minus 2 is equal to positive 18, and one where x minus 2 is equal to negative 18. You would add 2 to both sides to get x equals 20 here, add 2 to both sides to get x equals negative 16. And you can plug these back in, 20 minus 2 is 18. So you have the absolute value of 18 minus 13, does that equal 5? So does 18 minus 13 equal 5? And it does. So that's a solution. Plug in negative 16. You have negative 16 minus 2 is negative 18. So you have the absolute value of negative 18 minus 13. Does that equal 5? So the absolute value of negative 18 is positive 18. And does 18 minus 13 equal 5? Yes, it does. So therefore, that x equals negative 16 is also a solution. So our final answers for this one is that x equals 20 or negative 16. There are two possible solutions for us. Let's look at number four. Again, we've been stressing that we have to isolate our absolute values by themselves. So be careful here. Absolute value is an operation. It's protecting these. It's not the same thing as a parenthesis. So you can't distribute that 5. You're going to have to divide it out first to get that absolute value by itself. So that's going to cancel. So I get the absolute value of x plus 6 equals 4. And so we're going to follow the same technique. We're going to split this into two equations. One where x plus 6 equals positive 4 and 1 where x plus 6 equals negative 4. Subtract 6, x equals negative 2. Subtract 6, x equals negative 10. If I were to check both of these, negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. And 5 times 4 is 20. So both of these answers are true. So let's do the last one. Negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 4 equals negative 21. Same idea for this one. What we want to do is we're going to want to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to divide by negative 3. And so we get the absolute value of x plus 4. Negative divided by negative gives us a positive, so positive 7. So we're going to split this into two equations, one where x plus 4 equals 7, and one where x plus 4 equals negative 7. And so x plus 4, you would subtract 4, x equals negative 3. Subtract 4, x equals negative 11. And if I were to plug these values in, let's see what happens? So we get negative 3 times the absolute value of negative 3 plus 4. It should equal negative 21. So I have negative 3 plus 4 is a positive 1. So I get negative 3 times the absolute value of 1 should equal negative 21. Absolute value of 1 is 1, so negative 3 times 1. Does that equal negative 21? Does negative 3 equal negative 21? And the answer is no. So then x equals negative 3 
is not a solution. Let's try the other one. We get negative 3 times the absolute value of negative 11 plus 4 should equal negative 21. Negative 4 plus, sorry, negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. So you have the absolute value of negative 7 times negative 3 equals negative 21. Absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. So negative 3 times 7 does that equal negative 21? Does negative 21 equal negative 21? Yes. So therefore, x equals negative 11 is one of our solutions. So in this example, one answer works, the other does not. So we see why it's extremely important that we check our solutions. So the rule is when you are solving absolute value equations, you need to get the absolute value by itself and then break it into your two equations and always remember to check your answers because as we saw in the last example, one may work and one may not. They may both work as we see here or neither would work. So always isolate the absolute value first, split it into the two equations, solve like you normally would and check your answers. That is how you solve absolute value equations.